In this video, I want to talk about prototyping shields, how you can use them, and how some of them are designed differently, and what to look for when you're deciding on, on using one for your particular project. In my very first video on this channel, I uh, was learning how to solder and I soldered the female header pins onto this Arduino Proto Shield. And it was basically just all about soldering. And then someone asked me, well, what, what is a Proto Shield and what do you use it for? You know, put, we put the header pins on, now what? Uh, at the time, I just knew some basic things like, you know, well, you can solder some LEDs in here and some resistors, and this looked obvious to me that you can put some surface mounted components, surface mounted components here. Um, but I hadn't had any, you know, I wasn't at that. I was, at, you know, it was very much at the beginning. I still am, but I wasn't even ready to consider using a proto shield. So now that um, I've had some some time learning, you know, and I've, 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 I've done some more projects, you know, a lot of what I've been doing has been on solderless breadboards, creating circuits, and just learning the basics of electricity and Ohm's law and, you know, basic things. I've been using a lot of, you know, solderless breadboards. But I, uh, I started using this book, uh, Exploring Arduino by Jeremy Blum, and uh, you basically, you make this smart car, right? And in the book, he sticks with the solderless breadboard, right? And you put together, you know, you could do this with anything, with cardboard and, you know, some Lego wheels. You know, he shows you how to do it simply. He, he focuses on the, uh, the programming and the circuits and how things work and introduces you to components. But what if you wanted to take it a step further and make something more permanent, right? So you'd program it in your Uno or your Nano or whatever you wanted, right? In the book, he's, you know, let's stick with the Uno. So you want to, so this is my, here's my uh, circuit from the lesson in the book, right? And this is an introduction to the H-bridge and voltage regulators and capacitors and you know what those things do, why they're important, right? And this is the circuit that uh, you know I created from the book, um, and I use the Nano instead of an Uno, um, but you end up with this you know mess of <laughs> this me you know all these messy wires all over the place, and um, you know what if you want to streamline it a little bit, you know? Well, now you could bring in your Proto shield, and basically what you can do is what the, the purpose of the proto shield now is to make a make it more permanent and solder. This is solderless. You don't solder. You just stick the pins in and you get the circuit working and you test it. And once it's working, now you can take it to this level, and now you can put those components: the H bridge, the voltage regulator, right, the capacitors. Now you can put those things here and make it permanent. So I only have one H bridge. Let's imagine this is my H bridge, right? This is an IC socket with uh, with a with with a with an IC in it, right? So let me just pop it out just so you. Let me. All right. So you know you'd want you don't want to solder in so. You use a socket because you don't want to solder in your your IC because if something goes wrong, you want to just be able to pop it out and replace it with another one, right? So you can put a socket here and now you can solder it on the bottom, and make it permanent, and then put in your H bridge, which this is not an H bridge, but you can get that in there, solder it in, and now 
Now it's there, and if something goes wrong, you swap it out. Today. Okay. All right. Now, here's your voltage regulator. This is the same voltage regulator. You can put that in there. You can solder that in, right? Then you can take your capacitors, which are over here, right? You can put them in there, right? So this is for a smart car. So it requires a separate power supply for the motors. So you can put in a screw terminal here or here, wherever you want. I'm just going to put it right here for a second, right? And then you can, you know, when you create your project, now you got your nine volt and then you screw, screw in your, your nine volt and your ground here. And then you create, you know, then you can send, you could use one of these solid, solid wires, right? And, you know, you could run, you could run your nine volt into here and you solder it into there and, and you keep going, right? And let's say, let's say, you know, this here, this first pin here on your H bridge, right? Over here. Let's say you want to, let's say you wanted to put it, uh, where, where would it be? I forget. But basically though, now you can, with this, this one you can go straight from whatever pin is here right and go and you have access with this with this Arduino Uno you have access to to the analog pins and you have access to the digital pins and the PWM here right you have access to it you can go straight from from here to there without having to use these, which, you know, creates a mess. You don't want to do this. You don't, you don't want to do that. You want to get rid of these long, you know, wires and you want to, you want to solder. So you're going to solder underneath. So now you're going to create the connection and you're going to go from the wire, from the, you know, from the, from the IC socket to the wire, to the, to the analog pin on on the which later connects you know to the to the uno all right so this the way they made this you know uh, arduino prototyping shield is they gave you access to solder into these pins right as opposed to let's take the elegu i'm not knocking it but i'm just saying they designed it differently you cannot so you can, with the Elegoo, yeah, you can put this here, right? Now you don't have to create a connection, right? It's already connected. Each pin is connected here. You have these extra pads that are all connected, but there's no access to the analog. It's only the female, so now you're back to this, right? Which is what, you know, it kind of defeats the purpose a little bit. You know, maybe. I don't know. Maybe you could figure out a reason why it doesn't, but... You know, you're back to those, you know, to these big wires, and you don't want that, right? So if I wanted to transfer all of those components there to a proto shield, a prototyping shield, I guess I would pick this one because I have access here to these pads, which, which, which you know, are the analog and digital pins, right? Maybe for another project, having these rails is what you need. You need more of these rails. And, and so let's talk about the difference now here. So with this Elegoo shield, this rail here, this is the five volt rail. So anything you connect to here is getting five volts because they've taken the five volts and they've traced it. You know, you can see the trace. You can see how they, they traced it and, they, and it ends up there. Actually, the, there, it ends up here. Right from there to here, this is the five volt, and there's a trace you can follow it. So, you know, depending on what shield you get, just look at it and see how they designed it, and you can figure out whether this is going to be, you know, if a particular shield is going to work for your project. But this one is 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 made for really for, as far as what we're talking about, power rails. They give you all these five volt rails. Then here you have all this is ground, all this is five volt. And then down here, all this is ground, right? Then these here, 
This one is, is five volt. All these female header pins, five volt. These are ground, right? So they put emphasis on giving you access to that. Here's a smaller surface mounted area, which connects to here, but I don't want to get into all that. I want to talk about how different different shields are made differently and you you know how how do you figure out which one's going to work for you so for this project right i want to access so I, I would go with this arduino shield now however here's the other item to consider cost right this shield i think was about twelve dollars this shield do, do you want us to use a twelve dollar shield or do you want to use you know a shield that came free with a kid or or maybe you can get this for five dollars or four dollars, right? Right. The Elegu Uno is probably thirteen dollars. The Uno itself. So, so you know, you you may not like that option. So you might want to just not use either one and make your own shield. You know, from perfboard or you know, from from another breadboard. You know, with with copper pads on it and make it yourself. But we were talking about using these pre-made, pre-designed ones. So that's basically how you would use it. So let me let me let me talk about this Arduino, this Proto Shield a little bit, because there's not a lot, you know, like there's no video like how this one works here. So so let me just share what, what a couple things here. So this one here, this shield, this 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 uh, row here is all ground. Right, so you, when 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 this shield is plugged in to the Uno, right now all of this is traced to ground, so that's all common ground. So you get that now once it's plugged in, once the Uno is powered on, right now I believe I'm not a hundred percent sure. I believe that this I/O ref strip here, that's all connected. I believe that's you can get five volts from there. I believe that this is their version of the five volt rail, but it doesn't say that. But um, this is what I'm saying. Like, there's not a lot of there's a schematic, but you know, I'm still learning. But I saw something that that kind of said that this is where you get five volts. You know, test it out. You know, try it. You know, be careful. But I think that's how you can do it. Also, though, you do get this five volt. There's a five volt pad here. So you could, you know, make your own strip here if you wanted or wherever you wanted. You could make your own strip here. I guess if you weren't using this, technically, I guess you could turn this into a 5 volt. You know, you could run a, a wire from here, you know, from the 5 volt here. You could run it to this line here, you know, and make all that 5 volt if you wanted. Um, I've never done that, but... Anything that's just a pad, I'm pretty sure you can do whatever you want with it. Now, th these are very different. Like, you could put you could put a motor shield. Like, if you bent this down, whatever, you could put a motor shield maybe now on top of the Arduino, right? Sh the Proto Shield, right? But you can't put a, this motor shield on top of this Elegu because they use different, they use the different components when they made this. They use shorter male pins so they got these two rows and they block access so if you wanted to stack another one well you wouldn't be able to stack it here you'd have to come up with another solution because they don't line up um so i thought that was interesting uh you know you just be careful before you start soldering and you're all committed and then you think you're gonna just plop that on you know it's not gonna work you gotta come up i don't know this one does the same thing too. Like, there's these two, there's these two rows, but I don't want to get into all that. But you see, like, they don't just go straight down, straight up and down. Like, this um, Arduino Proto Shield's got these long legs on the bottom, so that you can reach down into the Uno's female header pins. Um, so that's pretty much it. That is how you can use an Arduino Proto Shield or an Elegu or, you know, there's also this one here. You know, this is uh, another company that, that makes one for the Mega. 
Uh, there's no connected rails here. There's just, you know, single pads there. And, uh, you know, and there's a surface-mounted space there. Uh, they're all different. You just figure out, you know, what you need. Uh, is it cost-effective? Is it worth, you know, blowing 12 bucks for the project? Or do you want to just make something from scratch? Or just stick with, you know, your solderless breadboard? But um, when I find a good project that I'm willing to blow this $12 shield on, I'll probably do it. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed this. I hope it was helpful. Uh, these are some things that I found out that... Uh, weren't that easy to find out. So I thought it'd be good to share it with others in my situation who are learning and, and just getting started like me. And uh, I hope this was helpful. Thank you. Take care.